Hi, I'm Gil Leona. I'm on the head of the bacteriology and the genomic repository unit. Here you're in the uh, fermentation facility that I'm heading where we can go and grow bacteria and yeast cells from very small amounts, from 100 to 200 milliliter using this tiny small scale fermenter up to 10 liter fermenter where most of the ribosome of adayonat has been produced so in, the, in all the years so far. And if 10 liter is not enough, we can go up to a 100 liter fermenter with this uh, pilot plant 100 liter where we can get kilograms of cell paste for you. So if you need me, you are always welcome to join our team. Bye. My name is Moshe and my job is to help to the students in this department to express and purify the uh, enzyme, proteins, etc., include ribosomes. Uh, this lab uh, gives the, faci the facility to the people here in uh, the uh, department to clean the uh, from bacteria usually, uh, proteins, like example, we have to break the cells French press and microfluidizer. In this Two examples, we didn't uh, touch the RNA, so it's very important for ribosomes. The next step after root certification is purification on FPLC. Uh, we have three of them, two in cold and one in uh, room temperature. And uh, this, this, for example, have uh, three different ranks left that you can follow uh, during the purification on the materials going out if it's a uh, all of the peak quarants, we can uh, think that it's a purified material. Hello, I'm Nadav from One Diskin's lab, and this is the Dragonfly. It's a liquid handling machine, and we use it to create gradient plates for crystallization conditions. Hi, I'm Yair. I'm a student in the uh, structural biology department. You're in the uh, crystallization room. In uh, this room, we prepare proteins for, uh, for, uh, for diffraction experiments. Uh, in this room, the protein is crystallized. It's, the room is kept in a constant temperature. We have plates in different formats, and each lab is uh, allocated its own shelf space. Uh, here, we also manipulate the crystals to uh, freeze them, etc. And uh, later, we take the crystals from, uh, from the, uh, from the uh, plates here to be measured in the X-ray uh, room. Uh, right now we're by the X-ray generator, one of the two that we have, uh, both of which are in our department. Uh, once we've crystallized the protein, we mount it, like you see uh, right here, we mount it uh, on this, uh, on this uh, part of the machine. X-rays are generated, they go through some optics that, uh, that uh, make sure that they're very monochromatic in a, in a very tight beam. Uh, the X-ray is diffracted from the crystal and picked up in this box here, which is uh, the detector. We take this data and with it we determine the atomic structure of, uh, of uh, macromolecules. This is the nanobar machine. It's the biggest one we have in Israel. It has, it's one of the first cryopros in the world. Uh, we usually use it to measure uh, biological samples to give high resolution spectra and we can measure even large proteins. Hi, I'm Jeremy Silva. I'm a postdoc in Liadadi Daddy and Steve Weiner group. And I'm working on zebrafish bone. And actually, to uh, answer some uh, issue, of I'm using this instrument. This is a micro CT scan. CT is mean uh, computer tomography. And actually, with this instrument, we can uh, this instrument emit some uh, X-ray, and uh, thanks to a detector, we can observe only the dense material and here the bones. Here we will observe the zebrafish backbone. Actually, a 30 days zebrafish after an excision in the CT scan. Here, it's really interesting because we have a wonderful resolution at 2.5 micrometers. And if we compare these results with what we can observe with a mutant, actually, with a mutant, we can observe that 
the backbone is less mineralized as you can see it's less brighter and uh, clearly there is some uh, hole and uh, spots missing. My name is Eyal Shimoni, I'm a staff scientist at the Electron Microscopy Unit. Now, the best way to preserve a sample for electron microscopy is to freeze it, meaning a biological sample. Now, when you freeze a biological sample, ice crystals grow and destroy it. In order to avoid ice crystal growth, we freeze a sample in this device, this is a high-pressure freezer in which samples are frozen under a pressure of 2,100 atmospheres. This is the pressure that one would expect to find at a depth of 20 kilometers under the sea level. There is no such depth. Once the sample is frozen, we can crack it open under vacuum in this device. This is a freeze fracture device and take it to the scanning electron microscope. Hi, so uh, my name is Anat and I'm a PhD student in the lab of Leah, Daddy and Steve Vinyl and uh, we're working on uh, biomineralization. In my case, I'm studying the, uh, the initial formation of the zebrafish tail, of the bones of the zebrafish tail. And here we're using the cryo SCM. So you saw Eyal in a second, before a second, and, and you saw also Jeremy that uh, showed you very nicely the bones. So here in the SCM, when you're using the cryo SCM, we can actually see, as in this picture, as in this picture, we can see very nicely two bones. Here's one and here's the second one. And the only, the soft tissue that surrounds it. The most important thing, the, the nicest thing about uh, cryo SCM that we can actually see the intact sample very close to the native state where here for example we can see the, the a nucleus and even the double membrane of it. Hi, my name is Elad. I'm from the laboratory of Avi Minsky from the structural biology department and I'm going to, to introduce you the TEM, the Transmission Electron Microscope. Uh, this microscope uh, allows us to investigate uh, small molecules like protein complexes and even much more uh, bigger uh, structural elements like nucleus and uh, etc and tissues also and uh, specifically now I'm investigating a virus that inf infects a unicellular cell and what you see here this movie it's a series of uh, 2D tilt images taken from virus angles this method uh, allows us to investigate, uh, after reconstruction of this data, we can investigate the 3D uh, spatial distribution and the mode of infection of this virus. Um. Hi, I'm Yael. Uh, I'm currently a postdoc at uh, Debbie Fast Lab and uh, I did my PhD with Avi Minsky uh, in the same department. And the cool thing about this microscope is that us as students, we get to work on it completely alone after being instructed by uh, a staff member here in the electron microscopy unit. And uh, what's very, very special about this microscope is that uh, its resolution is one of the highest uh, resolutions of an electron microscope in the world. And you can get even um, uh, structures or substructural uh, features in uh, a single filament of collagen or microtubuli if you're working on the cryo mode in this microscope. Good afternoon, it's me again, Hagen Hofmann from the Structural Biology Department. And now it's my pleasure to actually have the chance to show you uh, a single molecule confocal microscope. One of the instruments that we can use in order to see single molecules at work, for example, how they bind to DNA how they fold, how they perform their work as enzymes do, for example. What we need in order to look at single molecules is actually a microscope, a very high sensitive microscope. Um, and this microscope is used to use a, to 
focus a laser into our sample which sits here on the top and in the sample this laser is focused down to a very small spot with a volume of not much more than a femtoliter so much less than what you would ever be able to pipette and then once a molecule diffuses into this tiny spot it gets excited by the, la by the laser and emits light and this light is basically detected here uh, with very high sensitivity detectors that are able to detect single photons and uh, the light that we get from one single molecule is not much more than about 100, 200 photons but these detectors are able to do that. <clears throat> and so in this particular way we are basically able to measure distances for single molecules to see how these distances change once the protein performs its work, once domains open up or close again or once a protein falls up. And so this is the type of setup that I will use in my research and um, I very much look forward to see you at my lab and to explain you how everything works in much more detail than I have than now. Hi, uh, I'm Ben from the Structural Biology Department and here we can see a Delta Vision microscope system uh, where you can shoot live cells images and all kind of cool stuff. Uh, this is a conventional light microscope. And we also have here in the microscope unit a storm high resolution microscope when you can shoot images in the nanometer scales. Hi again, I'm Emmanuel Levy and uh, this is a robotic setup that we use to measure protein-protein uh, interactions and protein colocalization in uh, living yeast cells. Because these two quantities involve pairs of proteins, if you have a thousand proteins, you have a million possibilities. So we need to be able to work at very high throughput. Uh, for this, we have an automated incubator over there. And here we have a plate reader uh, that uh, can read fluorescence, luminescence, and optical density. And here we have a carousel that can accept uh, about 200 plates. Uh, and in a month's time, we will receive a spinning disk on focal microscope that will be on the right of the robot and linked to it through a, a robotic arm. At the center, we have the liquid handler that can transfer plates from one instrument to another. Uh, when we work with liquids, we usually work in 34 format, and this is the head that we use. And uh, when we work in solids, uh, we work with a pin tool to replicate yeast, yeast colonies from one agar plate to another. So this is a pin tool where you have 1,500 pins and each pin can transfer one colony. This is an example of an agar plate uh, where you can see yeast colonies. And from each single colony, we can measure the strength of one particular interaction. At the end of a screen uh, that typically involves one to 200 plates, uh, we automatically take pictures of the plates uh, here. So the plate is taken, the lid is removed, uh, and after we automatically process uh, the image to identify colony sizes from which we infer the strength of the interactions represented on the plates. Hello, I'm Tali Lani from the Structural Biology Department and if you ever want to take your experiments to the wild side you can come over to the uh, Transgenic Mice Center and generate your uh, experimental model. We have here various disease models. Uh, I've generated knockout mice for a specific protein and here we study the effects of various uh, molecules that we test in the lab and how they affect the animals and test possible therapeutic uh, prospects. My name is Harry Greenblatt and one of my responsibilities in the Department of Structural Biology is to look after our computing needs and our computing resources. So behind us we have racks full of uh, file servers and a compute cluster, two compute clusters, one 256 nodes and one more modern one which is 64 nodes over here. And we have approximately 100 terabytes of storage and we use all this to do our calculations, the simulations of molecules, calculations of the data that we collect, the synchrotrons, and storage of all of our files.